handing over a few of my favorite tips and tricks for one of my most favorite flowers ever. Hey flower fam, welcome back. You are in the perfect place if you're a farmer florist, flower lover, and you're on a mission to build a profitable flower business. One of the kind of concepts that I learned in my formal certification is that being able to have the knowledge of flower care, being able to understand availability and seasonality, and being able to design with some of these signature ingredients is what actually separates us from the competition. And learning how to manage your inventory, learning how to take care of these ingredients, learning how to process them, also benefits your customer because it means that the shelf life of what they have when they get the arrangement is even better. So if you're in the early stages of building your business, definitely invest a lot of time learning about flower care and studying how to use this stuff in the designs to create the look that you wanna create and understanding how to babysit these ingredients so that they have the longest shelf life possible in your workspace, in your shop, wherever you are doing your flowering. So let's jump into it and talk about all things dahlias. Very traditionally, dahlias are at their peak during summer and kind of in the early stages of autumn. And I say that with a great deal of vagueness. Summer and autumn, totally vary depending on where in this world you live. But it's really important that they need the heat, right? They need that constant, consistent, warm temperature. There are some of you I know that live in places where it doesn't get to freezing, you don't have frost, so your dahlia season might be extended. But for those of us who do live in areas that do have a frost, you can be like certain <laughs> that dahlia availability will almost disappear overnight, the first hard frost that appears. So if you're trying to figure out how to learn about dahlia availability in your area, find your local growers. This was one of my favorite kind of discoveries of being in a small town. We had access to what I think I am going to officially stamp as like Australia's best dahlias. The quality of them, the shelf life of them, the constant variety of them, like they just kept getting better and better and better. In many instances, your growers are gonna have so much information in their head, they don't even realize it. So our Dahlia growers, I think he's a third generation Dahlia grower. He knows a thing or two about Dahlias and I loved talking to him. I loved asking him different questions and the care that those guys took in their like Dahlia children just showed like every single time they drop their bunches off. They'll be able to give you a range of traditionally they start to become available here. Traditionally they start to end here. Let's talk about color availability and this is where your mind will be blown. Like I kind of think the only color they're not available in is like a blue blue <laughs> and a green green. Other than that every color under the sun. So if you're looking for that rich deep burgundy or plum shade if you're looking for 800 different shades of pink and one of the things to keep in mind if you're ever looking for that super crisp white dahlias are one of the most go-to solutions but also remember like every season every year that goes by people are experimenting and kind of playing with the science of coming up with new dahlia varieties so the world is like completely infinite when it comes to the colors that dahlias are available in. It's totally gonna depend on who your local grower is and where you can get your dahlias from because every grower is gonna have a preference. And if you can, go tour their dahlia farm when everything's in season, take some footage, take some video, take some photos so that you can remember next year when you're planning some of those weddings or planning ahead for some of the busier seasons that you'll remember what colors the dahlias come in. But remember as well, some of them are striped, some of them are two-toned, they have different shapes, different heads, different sizes. Like it is absolutely like a kid in a candy store in terms of the different varieties available. So it's totally gonna depend on who your local grower is. Now let's talk about wholesale pricing. For us here in Australia where we live, our dahlias traditionally wholesale for somewhere between, I wanna say, like 14 and $20 a bunch, sometimes even more expensive. And that is before tax. And that is for a bunch of five. Now, depending on where in the world you live, it might be a totally different price. But that's the price that I have always kind of based most of my pricing off of because even in some points of the season when they were totally in flush, I would still allocate that kind of budget on a per stem 
basis. So talk to your local wholesaler, talk to your local growers and get a bit of a range. And always remember too, like it might be that they're selling the smaller headed dahlias at a little bit less per stem and some of the like cafe au lait dahlias, some of the uber premium dinner plate dahlias, they might be at a little bit of a more expensive price point. So do your research. Now processing is actually super simple. It's going to depend on your wholesaler might wrap them up in cellophane and then put an elastic band on them, or they might just be straight up bunches. So definitely remove the cellophane, remove the elastic band and many growers, many wholesalers have different ways of processing their own dahlias when they cut them from the field. For me, our growers actually went out of their way to cut the dahlias very first thing in the morning. Through what I understood, he said it helped to make sure that so much of the moisture actually stayed in the bloom because when the sun comes out, it's gonna like pull it down. And to be honest, I don't 100% even know what I'm talking about, but their dahlias were amazing. I've also noticed the difference. If the dahlias are actually cut in the peak of the day, they're not gonna last as long. So ask your growers when they cut their blooms. And I think that's true across the board for almost all flowers you want to get the flowers that are cut before the sun is actually like sucking the energy. <laughs> that's not what happens, but that's kind of what happens. And talk to your grower about the best thing to do. Our grower said, do not trim the stem because they actually put a solution in the water that they deliver their dahlias in. So then we could just take them we would then change the water 24 hours after that. Definitely make sure that there is no foliage actually under the water line because that's when the bacteria grows and that's when your flowers will actually die even faster than if you had clean, clear water. Care tips. Now, dahlias have been one of those flowers where I have seen the warmth and the brightness of either your local environment or the venue that you might be setting up at or your shop has a dramatic impact on the shelf life. So you will benefit, your flowers will benefit from being kept in a cool, dark place. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a cooler, but actually keeping them out of the light, out of direct light and out of any sort of bright environment helps extend the shelf life of your ingredients. So there were some instances where we would get in like cafe au lait dahlias and they actually only would last about 24 to 48 hours. The shelf life on some of the varieties is really, really short. I always found that the kind of really round headed dahlias lasted longer than the water lily dahlias. But here's a hot tip with your dahlias. If you have those water lily varieties, the petals start to kind of melt away from the back to the front. So if you have dahlias and you had your heart set on using them in a specific installation or a specific design, and you only need them to last for a couple of hours, you can peel off those back petals and then still use the face of the flower. So one of the benefits of dahlias is that they actually die from the back to the front. And I've got another video here that will talk you through the ins and outs of whether you actually need a cooler because the short answer is maybe not, but definitely go check that out because it's super duper helpful. Now let's talk about designing with these bad boys. So because your dahlias are going to come in lots of different shapes and sizes, totally dependent upon your local grower, getting comfortable and getting familiar with how to use dahlias to create the aesthetic that you want to create is really, really important. One of the things that I kind of forgot about a few weeks ago, but I'm happy to remind all of us that sometimes those dinner plate dahlias as beautiful as they are using them in arrangements or using them in bouquets can be a little bit unwieldy. I love using them in bridal tables or mantles or things where we have like the scale and scope to create that impact, but having things that are this big, <laughs> in a design sometimes is hard, but a few tips and tricks. I have used dahlias in a foam free installation, no water source. Now it was in the shade and it was a fairly pleasant, probably like 25, 26 degrees out. We made this archway as close to the ceremony time as possible. But even when we took the archway down after the fact, it still looked amazing. The secret here is to make sure it's not in direct sun. It's not like at the big gusts of wind coming through and that your dahlias have an opportunity to really hydrate ahead of time, right? So this was making sure that they were in water for 24 to 48 hours. They're also coming from our local dahlia grower who has like the best dahlias on the planet. So 
quality really does matter. But you can use dahlias in almost anything. In many cases, they're gonna be far too big to be wired individually, and they may not necessarily last through the whole length of time if they don't have that water source. The thing about being able to create a foam-free installation is it only needs to last for a certain window. Try it out, definitely experiment with it, but you can use them in bouquets, you can use them in foam as well. Just be mindful if you're gonna use it in foam that you're really decisive with your placements because the stems are hollow and oftentimes they can be quite big. You're gonna create a hole in your foam and you don't really want to pull it out and then put in your placement again. Dahlias have got to be one of my most favorite flowers on the planet because they have such a limited season, right? I think the magic comes in the fact that they cannot be grown 52 weeks of the year, at least not here <laughs> yet, but it's this kind of seasonality around them that makes them so absolutely magical. And I love the fact that they come in so many different shapes and colors and they come in so many different sizes, so many different varieties. And I feel like every single year there's kind of like new colors, new vibes, new aesthetics being put out. So definitely go out there and build a relationship with your local dahlia grower because they might have some amazing little touches that you could add to your next wedding event or that could be a staple in your daily flower deliveries. Now, I know that that is a lot of information, my friends. <laughs> but that's okay because you can just come back and rewatch this video again. I hope that this has been helpful, my friends. Go out there and brush up on your flower care and your flower knowledge. Go out there and build a relationship with your local grower. And my friends, have the most amazing week and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now.